Hey guys, let's talk about the Livonian order. As you remember, I created already a guide for Livonia, so there will be some similarities in the beginning, but afterwards we go on a different path. The Livonian order is in comparison to the Teutonic order much more difficult to play. They do not have such a uber mechanism as the Holy, Holy Order that the Teutons have with one person cavalry ability, but the Livonians are a nation for players who are up to a challenge and who want to have a nice achievement, the Baltic Crusader. Let's start. Similar to the first guide they already provided to you, we have to do it one more time, additionally the same way. And as you know, U4 is a sandbox game, so this game can run totally different than the first game. The Livonians start with a heavy debuff. All the estates power are somehow occupied by bishopric powers. We need to get rid of them ASAP. Additionally, we do not own 30% crown land as the other nations normally do. So that will leave us one more step behind in giving out privileges that increase our power. So how do we get rid of these estates? Actually, it's very easy. Every time when you have more clergy loyalty than clergy influence, you can remove them. So we will already remove two of them on our second day. Let's hand out some estate power. For the clergy, we will give out none until the second day. For nobility, we will give out the increased levies. That's it for now. We don't hand out any kind of advisors because we need stability very soon. For the burghers, we hand out land of commerce and patronage of the arts, indebted to the burghers and additionally the private trade fleets. As the next action, we take our army, we put our leader in command and additionally we will hire the free company. Now it's time to get rid of the first debuff. We will take this kind of mission that we can take every two years. It costs us 20 devotion, that is somehow important. 20 devotion, we remove the Bishop of River in a few seconds. But before that happens, we wait, we wait one day. Next action, what we will do is, on the, on the admin stuff, we hire any kind of level 2 advisor that you can get. I will take this lovely girl here, Rachel von Altenbrockum. It will bump up our diplomatic power to 8. With that, we can almost complete one mission. We only need to hand out religious diplomats. But as you maybe remember, we need to first remove some of these estates. Before we go to day 2, additionally don't forget your trade fleet. Send it to the Baltic for trading. Protect trade, hold them back and forth. Your galleys. Hunt pirates in the Baltic Sea. Gotland usually becomes a pirate republic. Very annoying. With other money, try to build two more galleys. Now it's time to wait exactly one day. On our second day, this event will pop, pop up. We need to pick an heir for the Livonian order. And yes, you know, we know our devotion is down, so we need to bump it up back again. In this case, we take the local preacher. It will give us 15 loyalty and it will cost the nobility 15. But for the nobility, we don't care for now. Now we are back to 89. Oh, this air is awesomely bad. There's another thing special for the Livonian orders, they have bad airs all the time. With that, we can remove one more thing. We remove first thing the Bishopric of Dorpat. It costs us 20 national tax modifier. Now we wait until our army is here. In the meantime, you can summon the Diet. We can pick whatever you like, but I would suggest this one. Proposal of nobility, if you have it with two allies, that's very nice because we need the prep. Normally, I would suggest taking clergy because we need prestige and we need more loyalty on the clergy side. For this guide, I will take the clergy. You will take, do it too if it's a papal mission or it's that mission. Now you can seize land. You maybe have seen nobility is below 50. This will be not a problem for us because with increased levies, 
there will be no rebellion from the nobility. Now we are back to 15% crown land. Before we continue to the next month, now is the time to add one more privilege. We will hand out the richest diplomats. With that, we can accomplish the first mission. We gain a very cheap level 1 dip guy and we get plus 3 diplomatic relation for the next 5 years. This is very very useful because it will help us finding allies. Talking about alliances. First pick always should be Denmark. Because Denmark normally allies the Teutons. Though the next thing what we will do is we rival the Teutons. And we hope that Denmark is not allying them too. Next option would be Brandenburg and Bohemia. Bohemia could be a little bit tougher. Maybe you need to scornfully insult someone so that they are willingly to join. Though so we will scornfully insult the Polish people. So that will make two turns friendly to us and Bohemians. So the Bohemians are now at minus five. We have the free company uh, ongoing. So hopefully as soon as they are in there, they will ally us maybe. No, we need one more. So we improve relations with them. That should be enough. After one month, they are willingly to ally us, especially when we put our dip rep in, in charge that we have just received. We waited one month as, as discussed. We replayed this guy. Now Bohemia is willingly to ally us on the 26th. We will do that. And sadly, the Danish people allied the Teutons. That makes our life a little bit more messy. The Teutons normally ally in Mecklenburg, Stettin, Volgast, or any one of them. So we need to look out for another ally who is willing us to help against the Teutons. Could be that we take Volgast. Yes, Volgast is a good option, so we ally them too. And as soon as we are able to, we ally the Bohemians. Brandenburg wants to ally us too. Good. Now looking at the, at the alliance network, we have Denmark, Volgast, Brandenburg and Bohemia. Brandenburg and Volgas will help us against the two turns. Bohemia too, as soon as we have correct favor. Denmark obviously will not help against the two turns, so we have to fight them. But what normally happens is that Sweden could be very disloyal, so they are at 47. Additionally, Denmark is very often in a war against Novgorod, so they are busy. Though so if that happens, it's our chance to attack the Teutons because the Danish people cannot fight on two fronts at the same time. To accomplish the next mission, we need to have 150 relations with Denmark and Bohemia or another power with 150 relations. So what we will do is now, we give military access to Bohemia, we do the same for, for Denmark, we insult one of their, one of their um, ally, uh, one of their rivals like Den England or Burgundy and afterwards it's um, basically easier to get this 150 relations. Let's do that. 1st of March, you can now beat the, the skies over there in Rival. Don't forget to put your air in command 2 of the army, because that will help us to kick off the next mission with the 50 army traditions and we receive less shock damage. And now let's beat down these guys in Rival. Afterwards, we can lower army maintenance and additionally we uh, deactivate our forts because we need to be very conservative with our money. One thing we should not forget is after we've done this diplomations, focus on military because our guy is so awesomely bad that we will lag behind in military tech if we do not do something against it. Pops up sooner or later, it will basically guide us what we should be in the future, but this will be another will become very soon. We want to be and continue on the Crusader Paris. For me it happened in September. I have 150 relations now with Denmark. I have 150 relations now with Bohemia. Now this mission comes in and increases our monthly favor gain for the next 25 years. This is really awesome. So what we will do now is we carrying favors with Bohemia and we will do the same thing with Brandenburg and Volgast. As soon as we have 10 relations in Volgast, Brandenburg and Bohemia, we would be ready to attack the Teutons. Additionally, build 
a claim on the two tones on the minimal area. So we will do that first just to have the mission ready. One year later, we are now ready to claim a province. We will claim the minimal province, and thanks to that, we get. A um, we can accomplish this mission to give us 30 years a card of belly against the Teutons. So, curry favor with Brandenburg and Volgas, we need all our allies ready. That will happen very often too. Denmark declaring against Novgorod. This will happen normally always very fast and this will weaken the Danish. And at the same time, because they are so occupied in Novgorod, it gives us a chance to attack the Teutons. If that happens, raise army maintenance because we need to be ready. Again, I was unlucky. The Danish people were faster in conquering all these provinces than I could attack them. So they have a war exhaustion, but they will still have the Teutons. On top of that, even with 10 favored, Volgast and Bohemia would not like to attack them because they somehow um, dislike uh, like them now. So what we will do now is we will carry more favors with Volgast and Bohemia and maybe Poland is doing up the favor and attacks the two turns first. Or Sweden is getting more disloyal. We have to wait now. This is a little bit frustrating and could slow down your game too. Another option what you could do if you are bored and do not want to wait for the Teutons, you could attack Lithuania if you put a claim on them. Look, there are a lot of people who are willing to help us. I have built now a spy network against Lithuania or against Poland because Lithuania is a few one of them. This is an unusual choice because I wanted to first attack the Teutons, but as I mentioned, it's a sandbox okay. game. You never know what happens. And with Lithuania, as you can see, I, we have still a truce until December, but all these kind of guys will, are willing to join us. And I think that's a very good option too. So we will mark provinces interest now. We will mark these provinces interest. And additionally, we will, we will put the Mazovian provinces interest now. Because we will attack Lithuania, get these provinces here on top, and maybe we can steal Mazovia as they are, as they are well. So the truce has ended with Poland and Lithuania. We will put now one um, advisor for military in charge too. We have a discipline guy. As you can see, we are really strongly running out of money. In my case, I did not do the last clergy mission, so I will do that now. And afterwards, we will take Lithuania. So I've bought just the papal influence. Now we've accomplished one more mission. Now we have 78 influence. And that allows us to remove one more thing here. I will remove the fort maintenance. We will buy, summon the diet one more time. And again, we will take the clergy for Goldingen. We will def up Goldingen. We'll take whatever you like, it doesn't matter so much. Summon the uh, seize land one more time. And now we are already on the good side for seizing land. When you declare against Lithuania, play it on the safe side. Let your allies do the job. Because your army will be not strong enough to beat these guys. But your allies are. So let's go back and chill. Normally, Lithuania is always trying to get your fort in that guy. What you could do is you can increase and do a defensive edict so that it will be harder to siege it down. In the meantime, build a spy network on Riga. Because Riga could be another potential goal for you and it will help us to accomplish one more mission. As soon as clergy is again over the loyalties over the influence, remove the last estate. Finally my awesome um, ruler came in charge and my bad one died. Maybe you remember I got a very bad one in the beginning. He died too. Happens. So you can take now whatever you want here but keep in mind to accomplish one of these missions you need to have 795 devotion. So be careful with devotions or you have to invest a lot of military points to get it up. So again, I will take um, a local preacher guy because it will give me devotion. And always look for opportunities like that where you can beat down smaller armies. That makes the fight easier. When Poland is taking the personal union decision, they have maybe this Casimir Jagelin guy. He has only one in military, like our guy. But we focused on military. though. 
you should beat them a military tech. As long as you have Miltech 4 and they have only Miltech 3, use it for your advantage and try to beat down their armies. You have a tremendous advantage in the meantime. Don't forget, your addition you have this expand military buff, so that could help you a lot. In the peace deal, you maybe have realized the enemy has lost 105,000, we have lost 120,000. I was very, very conservative, mostly Bohemians, Denmark, Brandenburg did the heavy, heavy lifting. I was just laying down and chilled. What we do now is in the peace deals, we transfer the vassal of Mazovia. This is already a huge deal of the peace deal. Additionally, we carve out something from Lithuania, like that one. And on top of that, we take the Polotskas area. So this will give us a huge amount of aggressive expansion, but we don't care. On top of that, we take war ups so that Poland is paying off our debts. With that peace deal done, we have now this area, Polotsk, that we immediately release as a vassal. So now we have two vassals and we can give out one more privilege. We can give out the strong duchies. Now we have Mazovia and Polotsk as vassals who will help us out in our future wars. We have built a claim on Riga and Riga will be actually one of our next goals as soon as our ally is a little bit recovered because we need to fight against um, the Trade League of Lübeck. As soon as the first government reform kicks in, there are multiple viable options. There is this commercial merchant mission where we get one merchant or the external missions where we get manpower recovery. On top of that, there's this mission for protection where we get missionaries for defense and prestige for development for missionary. This is a very viable option too, but not for now because we are not ready yet to convert countries. So for now we take this manpower recovery speed because we will do a lot of wars in a very short amount of time. One more thing, sooner or later you will have 50 papal influence. So a lot of multiple, op lot of good options are here. Levy church tag for more money and construction costs. We are deep down in debt, so you can see we are not able even to pay back even with the war operations from Poland or moral of armies who give us a stronger punch. So I would go for the levy the church tax for now because we need money and need to pay back other stuff and we need to build churches very soon. Every time when you core up provinces, make sure that you afterwards lower the autom autonomy of these provinces. Cause Lower autonomy gives you more income. Right now I follow two tags. Now I'm basically lowering autonomy in all kinds of provinces. And we are back now to quarter five nine. So it's worth it. And additionally, it increases your land power. Before I had 13, now I'm eight. It's time for the next war. Riga looked for protection from, the, uh, from me. So they are now allied to the Polish. And additionally, the trade league but they don't know what's coming because we call in all our allies and will beat them easily inside or in case of manpower. So I hope this will be a, a short war. Additionally, don't forget to kick off this kind of mission because it will give us the Carlos Belly against Teutonic Order. It's now 1457. What could always happen is the Prussian Confederacy Revolution. So Teutonic Order will go, off, go against war against Danzig. So we need to make sure that we at least have a subjugation colors belly. Additionally, on top, as soon as we have Riga, we can um, fulfill this kind of mission after the war. My war was pretty quick with Riga. I got the war reps from each, uh, from each uh, member of the Red League and I just pieced out uh, Poland for, for money to keep the peace deal short. What happened on top? On top happened that Teutonic Order, the Danzig guys got independent. So now it's a perfect moment in time to declare against the Teutons, but Denmark would help them and defend them, or to declare against Danzig. We will see how this war plays out. Currently, it looks very good for the Teuton Teutons. When you caught up Riga, you can take the last mission, protect Riga. On top of that, you would be able to remove the last debuff and because of that, you can get this mission stability. 
And that would I actually allow you to do th this mission. For that you only need to have 2 stability, what we will have in a few seconds. And you need 95 devotion, what is easy to come by because you can just um, use military points to bump it all. So see, I have now maximum devotion, 95, and got 2 stability. And now the most important question comes. Then this event will pop up, the future of the Livonian Order, where you can decide, do you want to stay Livonia or do you want to become Livonia? Please look, have a look at my other guide if you want to know more about that one. Or if you want to stay a Crusader Order, then you have to go to the bottom part. And if you click the bottom part, you could see that the branching mission will change. And there are a lot of, lot of things now popping up and changing. So, now it really becomes interesting. There's one part here that only is about um, paper relations. So basically in the bottom part here you need to be defender of faith for at least 25 years. Then you get an insane buff. Uh, on top of that if you are ally the Pope you get papal influence and you get a very cheap inquisitor. If you have grown at least by five states you get a, again papal influence. And if you have a certain number of churches that will soon start building V again get papal influence and more importantly for every church that we have built we get manpower. The middle part is basically about the Holy Roman League, you need to ally the Emperor and unite the orders. We will do that as soon as possible because we need to vassalize the Teutonic Order and then the mission kicks off and gives very nice bonuses. The bonuses are changing and one thing that you should prioritize is this mission. A crusading kingdom. For that you need to first have a certain kind of amount of provinces in the north and afterwards 20 provinces in the south and then a crusading kingdom happens. What you need to know is currently you are a monastic order and the monastic order is a duchy. It's not a, it's not a kingdom and you cannot level up. You need to complete and the third Rome to become a kingdom. I will now continue playing and I will stop in a certain amount of times so you can see what, what I would do and what would make sense. So the next goal would be trying to get Titan on order. When you have done this kind of mission, one more thing is important, it's time to finally give out all the kind of asterisk powers. So rich estate, clergy advisory council, for the nobility you will give out military power as soon as possible you give out nobility and officer corps and supremacy over the monastic order aristocratic councillors for the burghers you will give out commercial advisor board it's the only one thing what was missing as soon as you can give out nobility and officer corps or if you want to annex your vassals give out nobility integration possibility furthermore we need to get the Renaissance as soon as possible. You have roughly 10% in Riga, but as you can see, the south of Italy is already happening. So what we will do is now, we will div up Riga up to 30 development, and we can use a lot of dip points right now and military points. In your case, do whatever you can to div up the province. Done, 30 development. As soon as the second government reform hits in, you have only one option, and that's education of the Kurd. Everything else, it is really not worse. Cheaper advisors are always worse. Next war could be against Turans, or could be in my case against Lithuania. Let's fight against uh, Lithuania again. Use reconquest castles belly to get our provinces back for Polotsk and weaken Poland once more. In my war, I just try to get four more provinces here from, from Lithuania. I have my claims on them and I feed back the Polotskan territory and take all the money I can get, take war reps and afterwards I peace them out. Now I think it's time to get the Teutons, but the Teutons are still allied to Denmark. That's why I'm carrying favor and I will break the alliance. Conquering Lithuania gives you more claims in all the Rusinian area. So basically Ukraine today. So you will get all claims here down to the bottom. Um, if you push for these kind of provinces, 
keep in mind you are only a duchy not a kingdom you cannot call as many provinces as you want to so it would be more valuable to push into Moscovy afterwards as soon as you have allied the pope in my case i did it really late because in the beginning they did not want to you get again 50 people influence and you get a missionary to convert lands very helpful and just take more of the buffs of the holy see you will run in the end all the kind of buffs permanently i have finally 50 in uh, favors with Denmark, so I will break the alliance now with two turns, and that gives me finally the ability to attack them without fighting all of them. So, playing war against them, and let's see how it plays out. There will be the moment when your first idea kicks in. For me, it was really, really late with 1477. Could be different in your case because you have maybe better rulers than me. So, as a first idea group, I would strongly suggest that you go for Divine. Divine has nice things. It gives you development cost and devotion. On top of that, it gives you later moral. I think that synergizes really well with the ideas of the Livonian Knights, who have no energy, uh, who have no moral at all, but they have some discipline and some infinite combat ability. 1478. I'm finally able to vassalize the Teutons. As you can see, there will be a huge coalition against me. Nevertheless, I will do it because we need the Teutons. Um, the Teutons will be our first march. And we will try to improve relations as fast as possible with the Pantanarch. Because Volga, Stettin, Poland, Mecklenburg, they won't join, including Magdeburg. There will be only some of them who are willing to join. Let's see vassalizing the Teutons. And the Teutons, we will make them to a march and on top of that we get a lot of army tradition now and the provinces in East and West Prussia will get a strong buff military right so they make a perfect march. One of the military missions inside of the mission tree is have at least 40% army, army professionalism. You start only with 5% as Livonian order, though there is some work to do with training and so on, and there will be of course events, but you need to hit 40 to get another nice little mission for the militarization of the knights. There is one additional mission inside of the mission tree that is the Fortify Livonia. Normally I would suggest do this mission as fast as possible, but if you do it in the first 10 years you need to have Riga because it requests that you have four provinces armed with a four. So you have one in Reval, it's one, second in Riga, third one in Letgain. So you need to build a fourth one. You can build one in Golding, one in Narva, everywhere where you basically have no protection against forts. And Golding has no protection from a fort, so I will build one up there. If you want to do it earlier, you need to build, for example, one more fort in Leafland instead of Riga, but it will cost a tremendous amount of money. But as soon as you have that mission, all the forts will be very, very cheap. By the way, this is not my war. Uh, I just helping out Denmark against the independence war of Sweden. If you get missions like that one, I'm Polotsk for free, always do it, because it will free you from the diplomatic reputation debuff. So in my case, I will now start uh, integrating Polotsk and additionally I will get ready for my next war against Moscovy. When the third government reform kicks in, there are other options again. Of course, you can always go for the land of the church to carry faster, um, carry faster influence in the career or you can go for expand temple rights. In my case, I will go for the expand temple rights because we will build a lot of churches and more churches give us less unrest and more taxes and we've already started building churches in this country to make more money. Um, always try to um, achieve our age objectives. For example, in my one I was missing the humiliation of a rival. I declared Poland as my rival and I will just take a few provinces on the top of that and humiliating them and getting all of the money because aggressive expansion is already very high against uh, Catholic neighbors. So the next war will be for sure against Moscovy. We just need to wait for a good moment to 
to jump on them. The moment has come to attack finally Muscovy. They are at war against the Great Horde and the Nogai Horde. So time to attack them and we will try to get a little bit more of the Novgorodian area first. Now let's declare for Castle's belly um, for Ingerman a little buff that you can activate when you fight the heathens of the Orthodox Church. So you can activate the Expansionist Zealotry, what gives you additional 5% moral and more clerical equilibrium. It could help you a little bit because we already have the Divine buff and if we compare now the army quality, currently we are almost on top of the world regarding army quality. And if you see we have 429 while the Moscovian only have 3.48. So pretty sure when our armies clash against each other it will hurt them. Winning the war against Muscovy was actually pretty easy. What we will do now is we take first the northern provinces and afterwards we try to snake, snake down until Moscow. We cannot take Moscow in, within the first war. Um, we will do it in our second war, so for now we just take some provinces on the Novgorodian area, Ingermanland as the Pskov area, and in our next war we will take down Moscovy. And as you can see, the Danish are very much interested into the provinces, so keep in mind when you call them in, they will try to um, steal provinces from you. In my war I'm just calling them in, and the second war I will never call them in again against Moscovy because we want the provinces for ourselves. One more event. When you beat the Russians the first time, the second battle on ice event will happen and that will give you the possibility for the Anti-Heresy Act. The Anti-Heresy Act is actually a pretty nice buff because it gives you 2% of missionary strength against heretics. So you can do that one. On top of that you can use the Enforced Unity of Faith for even more buffs for the Missionary, and you can see it's now very easy to convert these kind of provinces. You need to do that because there are certain kind of missions that require that these provinces are owned by a Catholic. So always make sure to convert them. You start currently with um, two missionaries, but with, when you expand and get more ideas, you should get more missionaries. And that is very important. For example, if you get claim the papal, you have three missionaries. When you get the religious ideas, you get one more missionary, and you will basically converting a lot. Though I would suggest as your second idea, you go for you go for religious. And religious on top of RP play uh, plays are very well with religious. It gives you more buff and shock damage. Very nice, especially in the beginning. As I mentioned. Forts are very expensive. Currently we have to pay almost six ducats, over six ducats for our forts. And there's this one mission, Fortify Le Le Livonia. And it will give me a Miltech 2 guy. And on top of that, our forts in the border area will be way stronger. And most importantly, fort maintenance goes down by 90%. So from one second to another, we only pay three ducats now for our fort maintenance. And this will put help us a lot. When you are at this stage of the game, there are multiple ways to expand. I suggest you use from the Titans the claims on Poland. They will get more claims here as soon as they have got these kind of border provinces. And then you can feed them step by step. Everything of Poland goes into tonic order and you can keep them as a strong march. But sooner or later you can give them even the ena enabled send or officers to give them even more moral buff and army tradition. Provinces you will get are basically all of Lithuania and Crimea. On top of that, and furthermore, you will feed everything into the Moscovy area into your third too. You need all these kind of missions to later become the Baltic Crusader achievement to get this, but for that you need to really develop a lot of lands, conquer a lot of lands as you can see you always need to conquer almost all of Russia and as I've already mentioned as soon as you um, end the third Rome as soon as you get Muscovy area conquered everything here you will become a kingdom very very important time try to ally additionally um, Austria sooner or later because you need to help them against um, the reformation and it will give you again some kind of diplomatic power and trust and 
you, if you win the religious war, you will see your ruler will become better, you get additional papal influence and both will really like you. And if you are able to even crush the reformation until end of game, you will get more and more papal influence. This is all the kind of papal influence that you get from the cardinals and what, whatever you have. You can use Akuria powers to always uh, promote mercantilism and with that one until the end of 16th century it will be very easy, will be very easy for you to uh, achieve 100% mercantilism. So we have spoken now about expansion routes for a Livonian order We're using your Vassal Titan order, your march. Let's talk about ideas one more time very quick. You will start with divine ideas. As a second idea, you could use religious if you are swimming in admin points. If you do not swim in admin points, use trade. As a third idea, use religious ideas or trade, as mentioned. And for the fourth idea group, it's already up to you. But quality makes very well with religious. Or you use offensive that makes very well with, with trade and offensive too. Nevertheless, you will be very rich if you own everything, every king of Russia, and you will have no problem at all. Your biggest enemy, sooner or later, especially when you claim the, paper, uh, the defender of faith, will be the Ottomans. The Ottomans will try to eat Hungary, especially in the beginning of the 15th century. With 1034, the Ottomans are way more powerful than before. So Keep an eye on them. Government reform is one more point we need to talk about. Currently, we are a monastic order, but as soon as you conquered Moscow, you will become a crusader kingdom. You will, you will, your ideas will change. You will get army tradition and discipline. You will keep the external missions for manpower recovery speed. If you, if you feel like, hey, I need more missionary power, there's always a possibility to change it to mission of protection, and this mission of protection gives you additional prestige per missionary. If you have religious ideas, so you, you get even more. If with trade you get additionally a merchant, uh, but if you feel, you feel like you need more merchants, you can always switch back to commercial, this is a commercial mission. Tier 3, there's only one option, it's the education of the court for the advi cheap advisors. Tier 4, there are two options, land of the church for more papal influence, or you take expand temple rights for, more, for income, especially in the beginning, the income is much more important. Tier 5. There is one good option, it's a monastic breweries because it gives 10% goods produced. If you feel like, hey, I want to have a stronger punch and my military needs to be more tradition, divine nobility is a very good option too. Or if you feel like the burgers needs to be keep in check, you take the mercantile type. After tier 6, it's really up to you because it only gets easier and you will be already on top of the world. Though it's 1488, Livonian order is already ranked number 8 in the world and with our next war against Lithuania, Poland, we will for sure overcome Austria too and in a, in a short period of time we will be the strongest nation inside, inside of Eastern Europe, if not in Europe at all. Again, if you liked my video and you liked the content you have seen, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, it would mean a lot to me. Please spread the word that he has professional content. Share the word with other with other guys who play you for a lot. I will continue streaming and recording and making new great guides. So thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.